you wake up at four in the morning and you balance your heart and your brain. And I can tell you without a doubt right now that if you're hitting it every day and at 4 a.m. your brain chemistry is just right, you got a high dose of melatonin moving through your body, it's at its highest quotient at 4 a.m. and your brain will stay in slower brainwave states because of it. You're more likely to stay in a slower frequency called theta. So when you begin to balance your heart and your brain, if you do that well enough, the frequency in your heart gets orderly and there's more energy there, but by the time it reaches your brain, it creates a new energy, a new awareness. You lay down and you surrender completely and surrendering is trying not to control or predict or force anything to happen. That would be living in the habit of separation when you're trying to do something, you're separate from it. In this realm, surrendering to the experience fully and trusting is a never-ending process for most of us. And so for me, the 4 a.m. time has always been a really good time for me because I've always been an early riser. And when I do my meditations at that time and I lay down, I would have these vibratory sensations that would literally electrify my body. And the first couple times it happened, having a background in healthcare, I started to think that I was having some type of neurological disorder or a stroke. You, know, you go right to the knowns and you, you stop. You always stop it, which is an interesting thing. And so you think about the experience and you say, God, what was that? It felt like energy. It's like nothing I ever felt before. It always happens when I balance my heart and my brain at 4 a.m. It scared me, so I'm going to cool off. I'm going to do something else or I'll start at 6 in the morning or you miss a day or two or whatever. But you can't stop thinking about the fact that something unusual happened to you. And that's when your soul begins to wake up and say, come on, you've experienced everything familiar and known to you. This is an unknown, you got to trust it. And so you show up again at the same time and you do the same thing and you surrender again and you have this sensation happen again, which means you're connecting to energy. And when your brain waves are in that theta state and you're semi-conscious below the surface of awareness and relaxed at the same time and you're in that kind of theta state and your energy in your brain is heightened like you're aware that's gamma but you're relaxed you can tune into energy and information and when you do that little receiver in the back of your brain the pineal gland begins to connect you to energy and the autonomic nervous system gets very very activated and so it's an electrical feeling that's taking place now we are going to be discussing that electricity quite a bit in the next year or so because it's activating your body. It's connecting you to the living matrix. You're getting hooked up. So in my own personal journey, many times when that happened in the beginning, I would stop it and I would think about if it happened again, could I surrender a little bit more into it? Just a little bit more and see where it take me. And then sometimes the sensations got super intense. So you stop it again. And so then all of a sudden, if you can surrender all the way, for me personally, many times if I could let go all the way, it would be the moment before I would have a transcendental experience, the moment before some door or portal would open, or I would get a glimpse into a whole other world, a whole other experience of reality. And that's what started to happen. And waking up at four in the morning then was no longer difficult after a while because I looked forward to the experience and many times I missed the door and that was okay because if I had it enough times I'd want to keep having it. So by you being curious about it is a healthy place to be and I can tell you it may not be the exact sensations that you're having but I think that judging from many people who begin to activate this body that's electric they ultimately feel in this level of ecstasy or bliss and I felt an incredible amount of love or connection that I'd never felt from anything before. And so, yeah, you think you're a little bit crazy. In fact, when I started having those mystical moments, I didn't even know if I wanted to talk to anybody about them because I was certain that people would think that I was you know, having some type of psychosis. But in time, though, I could correlate without a doubt that I was connecting to energy and information and my pineal gland was transducing that information into something in my brain that I could understand or experience. And it was the inner experience that caused me sometimes for days to feel 
some incredible emotion that would last for days on end, and you start wondering what's real because that was not a 3D experience I was having. So your experiment with what you're doing and balancing the heart and the brain is causing theta to be a carrier wave for alpha and then coherent beta and all the way up to gamma and that's kind of relaxed and awake is kind of where the door is between worlds. So my suggestion to you is to continue the experiment and to tolerate really as much as you can. And if it's something different, if there's a change in your level of awareness, there's going to be a change in energy. And that energy is going to cause you to feel feelings that feel less chemical or more matter. You're going to feel more like energy. And energy, when it's coherent, is picking up information. And that's what you want. And that connection causes you to feel more connected. And if you're feeling more connected, you're less separate. And of course, you move closer to true love or source. So that's what I want for everybody. I want everybody to have that experience in some way or another. So stay with it and continue the experiment. And I've seen people, and me too included, it takes a little bit of time to relax into it because sometimes it's really big. And everybody thinks, yeah, yeah, I can do it. But when it kind of moves in you, you got to be ready for it. And so continue the experiment and see where it takes you. Now, the answer to your second question is something that I have written three blogs about. And that is staying awake, staying relaxed and awake or conscious or in the present moment, in the unknown, instead of stressed or in survival or in a program or unconscious. And, you know, we start living our lives when we finish our meditations and we do really well for a period of time, but our response to everybody and everything in our life causes us to go unconscious back to those same states again. And so, even people who want to heal their bodies, and I just saw another amazing testimonial yesterday of a person who really started to denature her personality by just staying conscious in her waking day. And it just becomes a question of how bad you want it, really, I think, more than anything else. And when people really want to change, they make up their mind that they're going to think differently. And when they make up their mind, it's an experience that they create by making up their mind that begins to change their biology. So you got to make up your mind every day. And you got to catch yourself in the act of complaining or blaming other people or rushing or whatever people do and define those emotions so you don't turn back to the same familiar feelings that we define ourselves to be. And then if you can do that, then the next step really is to stop that to truly stop it for a moment and pause and to remember that you are the creator of your life and that when you change your energy, you change your life. So we'll do a meditation to generate change in your life and to remember that you're a creator. And then the last step, Rome, of course, then is I got to open my eyes now. I've changed my energy. Now I got to put more attention on my inner world of how I think and how I feel and less of all of my attention on the outer world. I got to keep doing this. So then our job is to sustain it for an extended period of time till it becomes really familiar to us. And that's how everybody changes. Everybody's changed at least once in their life and they just don't go back. They don't go back and do the same things. They Sometimes they don't see the same people. Sometimes they don't think in the same way. Sometimes they're isolated more when they're changing because they have to retreat from that familiar environment. But if we're in the process of living life, then it would be a good idea to retreat a few times in our day and remember. And that's why we do this work. And then to stay conscious and awake in our waking day. And then at the end of the day, we gotta ask ourselves how we did. Like really, how did we do? So we'll do that meditation and it's on the 16th. I'm inviting everybody, anybody in our community can come and learn that. And then I'm going to create some meditations for generating different things in our lives. It's not long meditation, short ones. I do this sometimes 10 times in one day when I'm busy and working because I don't want to keep going back to that same familiar energy, that same familiar feeling. So we're going to step it up this year because it's going to be doing it so well with our eyes closed that we can start doing it really well with our eyes open. Well. Let's see how I can address this in a few different ways. So, a lot of times 
when there are restrictions in the body, like energy can't flow through certain areas, and it could be structural, it could be due to an injury, it could be all kinds of different things. It could be lack of minerals, calcium, magnesium, dehydration, thinking of all the things that it could be from a both physical or structural, chemical, and emotional standpoint. That a lot of times when energy starts to flow through a person's body and there's restrictions, the energy is displaced through the connective tissue. Liquid crystalline structures and causes the body to twitch. And I've seen many times people that are getting healings without ever being touched. The energy in their field is being changed, causing their body to twitch and convulse involuntarily. And many, many times, a person has that go on for a period of time after the healing because the information that that energy is carrying is trying to be integrated into the body. Now, as I said, I can't say what exactly is happening to you because I can't see you or witness it personally. But I will say that I would make time if I had this happening to me to lay down after my meditation before I started my day and surrender my body completely to it so that it would move through me till it had its way. And once it moved through me, it would turn into something else. So I would personally make more time for it so that energy could work with my body. That would be one thing. I would consider taking colloidal minerals and drinking more water. I would consider starting to do yoga classes and flexibility classes to break down any rigidity in your body, massage, chiropractic, anything, acupuncture, so the energy can flow. I would consider that from a physical and structural standpoint. And then when you lay down in your body, after you finish your meditation and you surrender, pay attention to where that energy originates from. Is it from your second center? Is it from your third center? Is it from your heart? Just pay attention to where it's originating from and work with that energy to move up those energy centers by putting your attention in each one of them and allowing that energy to move to the next. And there are blessing of the energy centers meditations where we connect those energy centers one by one. We allow that energy to move to the next. I would consider then when I laid down to connect those energy centers by paying attention to where it started. And from wherever it started, I would work with putting my attention on the next one and relaxing into and surrendering and directing that energy to that next point. Because where you're placing your attention is where you're placing your energy. If you can work with this, that energy will move and move right up into your brain. And that's when it can really turn into something else. So I would practice it that way as well. If it gets too uncontrollable, then seek medical advice, see somebody that could work with you and just make sure that everything in your body is functioning okay. So when you teach people how to do that with the meditative process, it turns out that when they're in their life, they're less likely to emotionally react. They're less likely to be so rigid and believe the thoughts that they were thinking. They're more aware of when they go unconscious back into a habit, and that is what starts the process of change. Just because you have a thought doesn't necessarily mean it's true. So if you think 60 to 70,000 thoughts in one day, and you do, and 90% of those thoughts are the same thoughts as the day before, and you believe that your thoughts have something to do with your destiny, your life's not going to change very much because the same thought leads to the same choice, the same choice leads to the same behavior, the same behavior creates the same experience, and the same experience produces the same emotion. And so then the act of becoming conscious of this process to, to begin to become more aware of how you think, how you act, and how you feel, it's called metacognition. And so then why is that important? Because the more conscious you become of those unconscious states of mind and body, the less likely you're going to go unconscious during the day. And that thought is not going to slip by your awareness unchecked. It means to know thyself. Or the word meditation means to become familiar with. So if you become familiar with the thoughts, the behaviors, and the emotions of the old self, you're retiring that old self. As you fire and wire new thoughts and condition the body into a new emotional state, if you do that enough times, it'll begin to become familiar to you. So it's so important, uh, just like a garden. If you're planting a garden, you gotta get rid of the weeds. 
You gotta take the plants from the past year and you gotta pull them out. The rocks that sift to the top, they're like our emotional blocks, they have to be removed. The soil has to be tenderized and broken down. You have to, you have to make room to plant a new garden. So primarily, we learn the most about ourselves and others when we're uncomfortable. Because the moment you move into that uncomfortable state, normally a program jumps in. And that program jumps in is because a person doesn't want to be in the present moment and engage in consciousness. So when you teach people how to do that with the meditative process, it turns out that when they're in their life, they're less likely to emotionally react. They're less likely to be so rigid and believe the thoughts they were thinking. They're more aware of when they go unconscious back into a habit, and that is what starts the process of change. And so we have to unlearn before we relearn. We have to break the habit of the old self before we reinvent the new self. We have to prune synaptic connections and sprout new connections. We have to unfire and unwire and refire and rewire. We have to unmemorize emotions that are stored in the body and recondition the body to a new mind and to a new emotion and deprogram and reprogram. That's the act. That's a two-step process. I guarantee people watching right now are having like a hundred aha moments. For sure, that was definitely the case for me as I was researching you. And when you said that, I was like, and that's the danger, that you have the aha and then nothing. Yeah, yeah, and that's, it's a, it is a danger because then people will, will shrink back into mediocrity and they'll use the insight to excuse them from taking a leap. They'll say, yeah, you know, I have a chemical imbalance in my brain. Yeah, my father was really overbearing. He was a perfectionist. That's why I am the way I am. You know, people, they, they come up with stuff to, to excuse themselves. The insight is actually giving them permission to stay leader. It's, 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 it's an amazing idea because they'll say to me that they really want to get over their anxiety. But let's, okay, let's take your ex husband let's put him in a straight track, let's duct tape him and shoot him to the moon. Now what? What are you going to do now? You still have to make those changes. And so then the person who dies or something sits in your life and that person's gone to find another person to hate. This is just how we function as human beings. We just slide another uh, reason to feel those emotions. So I think, I think when